Hi, welcome to another video in the AS A level managerial accounting series. In the previous videos, we've studied about marginal costing and their application regarding the break even analysis and then also about the use of limiting factors or limited resources to maximize the profits of the business. In this video, we're going to focus on the other important uses of marginal costing. So we studied already break even analysis and the use of limited resources. In this video, we're going to focus on the remaining two important applications of marginal costing, which is the use of spare capacity of the business. And when a business has to decide whether to make or produce a product in house or to buy it from an external supplier, what kind of analysis is required. So let's start with the use of spare capacity. Now, a factory may have spare capacity, meaning whatever resources it has, it is already using that to produce a certain level of output and the demands of all the customers are already met. After that, whatever spare capacity the firm has that can be used to produce and sell output for additional orders, even if that output or that additional order is sold for lower than the normal selling prices. Now you would question that the profits of the firm will fall, right? If the order is accepted at lower than normal selling prices. Let's see, let's analyze what happens to profits if even if the orders are accepted at lower than normal selling prices. So what are the conditions that have to be kept in mind when accepting such orders? Let's see. So conditions to be fulfilled. Spare capacity must be available, which is obvious. If you don't have spare capacity, you cannot accept additional order because you're not going to set up additional machinery, additional factory building to, you know, just accept additional orders at lower prices. Existing spare capacity has to be there. The selling price that has been offered, even though it's lower than the normal selling price, but it should be greater than the marginal cost of producing the output. Marginal cost is nothing but the variable cost. So whatever additional cost you incur every time a product is produced, that is called the variable cost, the selling price offered should be at least higher than that variable cost. It may be lower than your normal selling price, that's okay. So when the selling price is greater than the variable cost, it leads to a positive contribution for the firm whenever output is sold. So this is very important. We are focusing always on positive contribution for the firm whenever decisions have to be made using the marginal costing concept. The, this one was a financial factor. I mean, you, you know, you have to see positive contribution. There, there are two important factors other than this that are important and there are not monetary in nature, they are non-monetary factors. So the new customers should not be able to sell the output of the firm to the firm's existing customers at lower than normal selling prices. Meaning you're selling your output to some new customer at lower prices that customer, if they buy it from you and give the output again to your old customers at lower prices, you may have a bad relationship with your existing customers. So you have to ensure as a firm that this should not be done. And obviously the existing customers should not be aware about this additional order or this new project that you're undertaking because if they come to know that you are selling at lower prices to some other customers, obviously they will not be willing to pay you the same higher price in future. Let's have a look at the example to understand how this can be applied. Let's say a firm manufactures only one product, one equipment, and from last year's data, following information is available to produce 20,000 equipments. Let's say they have a capacity to totally to produce 20,000 equipments. Selling price 180, which is the normal selling price of the firm. Direct material, direct labor, and royalties. These are the variable cost of the firm. So if I take a total of this, I get $128 per unit. That's a variable cost per unit. And fixed cost is $32 per unit. Since it's paid for 20,000 equipments, if you wanna calculate at any point, the total fixed cost paid by the firm, 32,000 into 20,000 units, you'll get $640,000. There's a spare capacity in the factory for 5,000 equipments. Out of 20,000, 5,000 equipments are not being produced, so there's a spare capacity. There's a possible additional export order of 5,000 units, but the buyer is willing to pay only $1.140 per unit for each equipment. Now, 
if you compare the 140 to your normal selling price definitely it is lower than the normal selling price so you might think okay let's not accept this order because it may not be very profitable but when using marginal costing concepts you always have to look at the contribution you always have to check how much is the variable cost of production so if i compare the variable cost of production 128 to the new selling price which is 140 i can see that every time i sell one unit one additional unit i am going to generate a positive contribution of dollars 12 per unit any positive contribution will lead to increase in profits for the firm so now advice if the management should accept or reject the order yes the management should definitely accept the order why because this will lead to a positive contribution of 12 dollars per equipment multiplied by 5000 equipments which is the total order for so there will be additional contribution of $60,000 which is nothing but increase in profit this increase in contribution will lead to eventual increase in profit so yes they should accept the order obviously the two non-monetary conditions that I told you have to be kept in mind then using marginal costing concepts you can also decide about whether to make a product in-house or whether to buy it from the existing suppliers this situation can arise either for existing products let's say you're already producing some products in your factory but some situations arise and now you have an option to purchase the product from external supplier or you may launch new products in future and for that you have to consider whether to have a factory to produce those products or let's buy it from external supplier both for both decisions for both situations this can be relevant what factors have to be considered before deciding the cost of purchase should be compared to the marginal cost of production marginal cost is nothing but variable cost of production keep in mind we are not taking into account the fixed cost here the existing fixed cost of the business we are not taking into account we are only comparing the cost of purchase the price at which you are getting it from the external supplier and we are comparing it to the variable cost of production any additional fixed cost that may have to be incurred yes that is important because that is extra money going out of the firm's pocket existing fixed costs i told you to ignore but any additional fixed costs that have to be done or that have to be paid because of this decision that has to be considered considered here now what factors have to be ignored which are not relevant for this decision existing fixed cost i already told you they are sunk cost and have to be incurred in any case let's say even if you decide to purchase it from an external supplier in the short run fixed costs cannot be ignored you still have to pay and any additional selling cost that has to be paid when selling the product that has to be ignored why because selling costs have to be paid whether you make the product or you buy the product from outside it has to be paid in any case so that becomes irrelevant for decision making let's look at an example the firm manufactures only one kind of equipment so we'll continue with the same example 20,000 equipments are being produced and here is the costing data. The firm has been approached by an external supplier and has offered to supply the same product at a price of $140 per unit. So we can buy it from an external supplier for $140. If this is accepted, the firm will not be able to avoid its current fixed cost. So $32 into 20,000 equipments, $640,000 has to be paid anyway whether you buy it or whether you produce it advise if the firm should accept the order of buying the equipment from outside or continue producing it so important compare the cost of purchase to the variable cost of production if i take a total of the variable cost of production it comes to 128 dollars per unit now what students might do and what mistakes they might do they might take the total of all the cost so the total cost comes to 160 dollars they'll compare this 160 to 140 and say that okay since 140 is lower than 160 let's buy the product from outside but no you cannot do it this way the fixed cost which is 30 dollars per unit or 640 thousand dollars in total have to be paid anyway so it becomes irrelevant for decision making even if you buy it from outside you're going to pay this from your pocket so Let's ignore the fixed cost and only take a total of the variable cost, which is $128 per unit. Now, 
if given an option whether to produce at $128 per unit or buy at $140 per unit, what would you do? Obviously, you will keep producing the product in-house because of lower variable cost. So I hope you understand the concept now. You have to compare the cost of purchase to the variable cost of production and I hope you also understand the reason why it has to be done. Hope you liked this video. Thank you for being there.